this time we're visiting Publico in Madrid. Um, and thanks very much to our hosts, uh, our host Virginia, for inviting us to look under the hood at their amazing news organisation. And, you know, to have a talk about, you know, how, how they think about journalism and how they think about the business of journalism, as well as some of their news products and um, innovations. And um, the, I'm Jackie Park, the Head of Network Strategy and Innovation for IPI. And this the Virtual Visits Program is an initiative of the IPI Global Network, and it's part of our global journalism program. And, you know, it's a simple concept, really. It's about, it, you know, it's a way to share the knowledge that we are all learning around the world as we manoeuvre our media through this you know, digital transition. And also, how, you know, as we find the best ways to, to do quality journalism and to serve our communities. So in a moment, I'll introduce you to Virginia and invite her to open up with an introduction to Publico and some of what they've learned so far. And then we'll open it up into a conversation and it will really be over to you to, to all of you, you know, for where we take this conversation, from the journalism and the products to, of course, the, the business model. So have your questions ready, and uh, please don't forget to introduce yourself because we are recording this session. And, you know, it's also a way that we get to know each other uh, as well. And... I think, as, as you know, we have intentionally kept these visits as small groups so that we can get down to, you know, really get down to some good conversation. And uh, in that spirit, we ask if you can, please do have your video on and, you know, lean into the conversation. We're all, um, as if we're all in the, the newsroom at uh, Publico in Madrid, which hopefully, you know, someday soon we might be. And uh, please turn your audio off unless you're actually asking questions. You can pop your questions into the chat box and that way, you know, Virginia and I will know you have a question um, or you can pop, you know, um, use, the, use the hand, um, raised hand, which is in the reactions box and then it will be over to you to talk. So we are thrilled to have Virginia Alonso hosting us today. Virginia is the uh, Editor-in-Chief of Publico. And I think because you're going to tell us so much about the media organisation, I'll hand it straight over to you, Virginia. Great. Thank you very much, Jackie. And thank you, IPI, and all of you guys for being here uh, listening. And I hope we, we can have um, a rich conversation. But uh, first of all, I'm going to go through a presentation so you can know a little bit more about Publico and, and the work we do there. And then afterwards, we just hold that chat if you like. Okay, so I'm going to start and, and thank you all once again. Let's see if everything works. Okay, so uh, Publico is a quite new newspaper. I mean, uh, it was born in 2007 and it has like a, a free, uh, courageous, uh, critical spirit. And um, we are an independent media. Uh, we try to do very rigorous information. And I mean, our aim at the end is changing uh, unfair realities, okay? And, and building a more egalitarian world. It sounds like very big, but actually it isn't. I mean, <laughs> because at the end, uh, what we want to do with journalism, I think that all of us is but that what I'm telling. Okay, we're trying to be away from ideological cliches and, and of course from commercial and business interests. And um, we, are a, we have a progressive spirit, but most of all, we defend uh, human rights. Okay, and this is quite funny because in Spain, when you defend human rights, people tell you that you are on the left wing, okay? 
in a political left wing. Um, but of course, in the rest of the world, human rights are for any ideological option. But this is uh, quite distinctive in, in Spain. Um, let's see. So what we did, I mean, I'm, I work in Publico for Publico since 2016. And when I came in, uh, it was a very small newspaper. It had a, a newsroom with 20 people, more or less. And um, I mean, it was quite chaotic. I mean, everything, everybody did everything. Uh, there were no uh, concrete tasks assigned to to anyone in the in the newsroom uh, so well, when I started to to work here what I thought is that it was very important to to focus what we wanted to do so I wrote this document that is a public document and and then anyone and of course our readers can take a look at it which we call the 10 flags editorial flags of publico Okay, and there you can see um, what are, well, our goals, our informative goals, our editorial flags, uh, which is, I mean, what I was telling you before, we denounce injustices and abuses. We are a feminist uh, newspaper and we declared, so uh, in 2016, I mean, me too, <laughs> wasn't born yet. So it was not so easy to say that you were a feminist uh, newspaper at that time. Um, we monitor and collect violation of uh, fundamental rights. I mean, from the right to work and to housing to religious sexual of speech and of thought freedom. Uh, we are very vigilant with the aggressions uh, from the extreme right. We are very committed uh, to historical memory because in Spain there are still too many people who suffer persecution during civil war and, and dictatorship and they have not obtained any reparation. Um, this like a few years ago, this was, uh, I mean, talking about historical memory um, was not something usual in Spain. Now more media are doing this, okay? Uh, we also want to be a public notary for social emergency situations, uh, especially those related to energy, energy, poverty, evictions, migrants, because in, in Spain, the 2007 crisis hit very hard and we have a, a very um, um, unequal society. And, and those things happen a lot since this uh, crisis. We are a political newspaper and we consider politics as a key uh, instrument to change these realities. And um, we are especially vigilant with politicians, parties, institutions, with abuses of power and with the destiny that is given to public money. Um, we have uh, a team that just works on investigative journalism. Um, and we have uh, uh, published some stories that have uh, changed, um, well, not as many things as we would like, but that has uh, shown how the police was working during the, the last 20 years. And actually now in, at, at the Congress, um, we have this um, investigative commission, uh, which is open. And, and when they are talking about all the information that we've been publishing since uh, years ago. Uh, we're very focused uh, on the effects of climate change, but not only on the uh, environment, uh, but in economy, um, in the energy policy, and I mean, in a transversal way. We are defender, defender of animal rights, and, and well, we promote and, uh, the right to enjoy culture, uh, because we in, intend, we, we understand that this is a political instrument and a vehicle of an enrichment for any society. Okay, so these are our flags, 
Um, as I told you before, Publico was born in 2006 and in 2007. It was born as a printed newspaper, but uh, due to economical uh, problems, uh, it closed its print edition in 2012. And since then, the newspaper is 100% digital. Um, nowadays, it's the only female -led media outlet in Spain. I mean, we are two women uh, leading the newspaper. And uh, it has been this way since 2016. Uh, currently, we are 67 people in in the in the company, and there are three main teams. One is management, then is uh, technology, and then is the newsroom. Um, that now we are 50, 56 journalists, but the 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 size of this newsroom has grown 170% since the, the starting of the digitalization per, period. Um, how do we work? When, as I told you, when I came here in 2016, I just well, changed the way of, of working in the newsroom. Uh, so we have like different speeds of doing journalism. We have this fast speed, which would be the breaking news area, which is last minute information, social, uh, social network and so on. Um, we have, uh, well, the news stories, reports, analysis and so on that are focused in our editorial flags. And these are stories that, that are being prepared during the day and they are published at night. And here the key for us is like focusing uh, very well these stories. So we talk about them in the morning and then we publish uh, at night. We have this investigative uh, journalism. There is no deadlines for this uh, kind of journalism. We have a team of um, four people uh, that they don't go to the newsroom uh, they just work in their stories and when they have something good, they tell me and we go through it and we see how we should publish it. And maybe we publish, I don't know, six, six to 10 good stories a year. Um, but I mean, it's not usual that a small newsroom has a team just liberated for, for this. And then we have this lowest speed, which is the print product, which is curious because um, in Spain, at least, uh, most of uh, printed newspapers are going to, to very tough times. Uh, they don't sell uh, almost anything. I mean, they are declining the sellings of, uh, of printed uh, um, newspapers. but. Um, we started, it's not new in Spain, I mean, other newspapers or media outlets do the same, but we started to, to print a magazine, a quarterly magazine, which we do only for our subscribers. Um, I, and they really love it. I mean, they just collect it, they, they receive it at their um, mailboxes at home, and um, they love this product. And then we have another print uh, product, which is called El Quince. And it is a, a weekly newspaper. Um, and we give it for free at the streets in Barcelona. Okay, and people love it also. So, I mean, there's still room for, for print products. Um, well, our... Our um, editorial pillar probably is the transparency. Um, we developed uh, like two years ago this tool we call uh, we call it uh, TJ tool, um, which is transparent. Uh, well, it's a, a, a transparent tool, and um, this tool uh, allows uh, the readers to go through um, the process of how an information is made, okay? Um, anyone can go through this map of transparency in every piece of news in, in Publico. 
is a self-developed uh, tool. And uh, well, we think that it's very important in times of misinformation uh, to give credit to what we do. So this is what we show in, in every information. No? You have this, this symbol, um, so you can go through that. And, and well, there are some variables um, that just give a percentage of transparency. And, and actually you can see there, uh, which are the sources that uh, the journalist uh, has checked, um, what documents uh, have they go through to make this information and, and so on. Well, actually uh, the bulk of public revenues uh, comes yet from advertising. Uh, conventional, programmatic, sponsored, institutional, but uh, we launched a subscription model in 2018. And at the end of, the, of this year, um, this subscription model would represent one fourth of our total revenues. Uh, in 2018, advertising was four or fourth uh, of these revenues. So I think that this is a good path for us because the idea um, actually was to diversifying um, income, okay? Um, every euro that we gain is reinvested in, in a newspaper. And uh, this model uh, has allowed us to grow, to grow in the newsroom as you have seen, and to dedicate more time and more journalists, some of, of, some of or these um, editorial flags. Uh, for example, the investigation, uh, which for us is very important. And, and as I was telling you before, um, this investigation on the working of the um, police uh, department has ended with a very important commissioner uh, which is called Villarejo in prison. And, and now it's going on a debate, an important debate in the, in the parliament in Spain. Um, this allows also to, to, well, to send some journalists uh, to some places uh, so we can write about the immigration well, policies in, in Spain, because as you know, Spain is the door of, uh, one of the doors of migration to Europe. And, and well, uh, it allows us to grow and, uh, and we do that. Um, but we see journalism as a service, not as, not as a product. And, and that is why our business model with subscriptions is membership. Um, Membership is not based so much on, on content, although obviously uh, you have to have quality content if you want people to pay for anything. Um, but membership is more based on an identification uh, between the reader and the newspaper. Um, the reader uh, believes that our work is essential for the community, so they are willing to pay for that. Um, a lot of newspapers in Spain, and I think in, in the rest of Europe also, um, are starting to build paywalls. Um, we decided not to do that because um, in times of disinformation, um, we are more convinced than ever that keeping information open is the best way to fight fake news um with quality journalism so we believe that if everybody just closed the information um we i mean a lot of people will be lost <laughs> in in a world well they won't get this quality information so we strongly believe that we have to keep our information open and that's why we decided uh, to go for a membership model. Um, this is an evolution of our, our membership uh, model. I told you before that um, we launched it in 2018. 
uh, at that time, our direct competitors um, had already launched their payment model, so we were late. Um, and <laughs> we were a little bit scared about that because, um, well, we had to do the, that in an um, amateurish way. Um, but we thought that it was the time and that we had to do that because uh, if we didn't, um, probably we would have struggled with some problems, economical problems. So uh, we talked to this company that um, do, this company did a subscribers model for ONGs and um, we started to work with them and what they, did with us was like um, playing uh, the same system that they did with the ONGs. Um, and it was very focused on the email channel. Um, but thanks to this strategy, uh, we managed to, to gain more than uh, 13,000 subscribers. And actually um, we have surpassed all the media that have started before us, except for one, okay? Um, what we're doing this year, and this uh, 2021, is professionalizing uh, this area um, and, and, and trying to open it up uh, 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 beyond this uh, mail channel. Okay, so we are creating personalized recruitment models um, based on the consumption of the readers. Okay, I mean the consumption on site. Okay, then you can see here a line uh, when you see, I mean, the, the evolution of our uh, figures. Um, we want to have uh, 20,000 subscribers by the end of this year. Um, and the first year we got uh, 3,300. So you can see that year by year, we, are, we have been doubling uh, the previous uh, figure. So now we think that we're going to start to slow down a little bit, but we count on that. Uh, we're still happy with, with these figures. Mm. As I told you, the content is free for all readers, but sus subscribers uh, have uh, some premium experiences. Um, well, they, they can access to discussions on topics of interest and to some um, colloquia and um, these kind of things. And, and they are the only ones that can um, that can access to, to all these discussions. And then they get in their box mails at home, uh, quarterly printed magazines. Um, we have uh, made 13 magazines so far since we started. And they go through these um, editorial flags that I told you. Um, some of them that have been very successful uh, were, well, the first um, age of March um, that was historical in, in Spain. And since we saw how the movement was growing, what we decided was, was to give it for free in, in demonstrations at the street, you know, so everybody was uh, on the streets with <laughs> in their hands with this um, magazine from Publico. Um, well, last June, uh, we made one about the, the pandemic and the consequences social and economical from the pandemic. And the next one that we are promoting right now is about the 10 years of 15th of May and, and the um, Spanish revolution. And, and well, <laughs> and what we say is that there is still a world to build. I mean, that a lot of things were done in, in thanks to 15 of May, uh, but we have so much to do yet. You know? 
uh, this the one that you see in the picture, which is called Combatientes, was the last one. And and this, I mean, we have a lot of subscribers, a lot of new subscribers, thanks to this publication, because um, this one goes through the women that fight it in the civil war, and no one has talked in Spain never about this issue. So we gained a lot of subscribers thanks to to this one. Um, well, this is like a, a timeline uh, of the newspaper, uh, as you can see uh, the different different steps that we've been through from 2007 to 2021. Um, as you see in 2012, uh, the newspapers start to be 100% uh, digital, but one of the things that, that uh, well, Publico did very well is that in 2013, they started to launch video, uh, but not the, the classical video online that we see in, in any newspaper, but uh, news programs, uh, humor, magazines, events. I mean, they did it very, very, I mean, before <laughs> the rest of, of media. And another thing that I think that is very interesting in, in Publico is that uh, the bet they did in those days for Facebook when everybody was betting for Twitter. And, and that gave us a huge community um, that supported a lot of things that we did after that. Um, well, I'm, I'm not going to go through every point. I think that we have been more or less uh, how, how we've been working these years. Um, Publico TV, which is the, the video area in Publico, is one of our um, strong points. <laughs> um, we do a lot of things where with a very small team, um, and uh, I think that that the the thing that we do best and and that it differentiates more public or from other media is the diversity of of programs that we make. I mean, we have late nights. Uh, we we used to have uh, a daily um, <laughs> news broadcasting. I don't know, we are rethinking this area all the time. Uh, we are changing it. I mean, um, and now we are in a process of, of rethinking everything. Uh, because we want to to transform this area in a, well in a in a kind of a, in a journalism lab, okay. So I, I just I'm just going to play you for seconds. I mean I'm, I don't want to put the the, the, the video um, the whole video, but I mean this is one that I like a lot because it shows uh, Madrid. Uh, when everybody was confined at home um, and then when it started to open. So just some seconds. Well, so what it's uh, what you can read there in Spanish is that we have been together, I mean, publico with with its readers, in the most uh, difficult year 
of our history. Um, uh, we did a lot of videos of this kind uh, during confinement. And then, well, here I'm, I'm not going to play, but this uh, uh, interview with uh, Pablo Iglesias. Um, Buenos dias, Pablo Iglesias, secretary. Sorry. And it was made like a week before that he decided to, oops, sorry. Uh, a week before he decided to, to leave politics, which has been a, a huge story um, in Spain and, <laughs> and a huge uh, news. I mean, because this was one of, of the, this is one of the political parties that was born after this uh, Spanish revolution. And uh, Pablo Iglesias has been uh, uh, well a very important and and um, and uh, polemical figure uh, during these years. Okay. <clears throat> well, according to data from Google, Facebook, and Instagram and Twitter, our news has more than uh, four hundred million impacts. Uh, per month. Um, Publico is read by an average of uh, 7 million people who consume a total of uh, 54 million page views in a month. Um, we have, um, we do in, in, our, um, in our subscribers uh, model, um, one of the um, main issues is that we build like campaigns um, and we ask people to sign those campaigns. Um, those campaigns go through, through our editorial flags. So, um, I mean, just as an example, the last campaign we launched like uh, two months ago or three months ago, was um, defending the liberation of the patents of the vaccines for COVID before Biden <laughs> told to do so and, and before the debate started in, in Europe. Um, so uh, what people does is like signing these uh, campaigns and, and that builds for us a database, a very important database um through which we can um uh, try to convince them to be our subscribers okay so um we have already uh two and two sixty thousand um two hundred and sixty thousand people that have signed some of our petitions calling for social improvements um uh 1,300 and 100 people are subscribers. I mean, they are paying every month because they believe in the journalism that we propose. Um, and in exchange, uh, they can navigate without advertising and they can receive this printed magazine that I've talked about. Um, and uh, besides, we have two, two, 240,000 people that are, are friends of Publico's environment. And that means that they can, uh, they browse locked, they comment, uh, they consume online content on the magazines, but they cannot receive it at home. And they interact in some way uh, with Publico and with us. Um, <clears throat> uh, this is the, the um, what we are shy. A shift. Um, we have an audience that is very loyal, and um, they visit uh, Publico around eight point two times a month. Uh, the industry average is uh, seven point nine. Um, on each visit, uh, each user spends an average of two uh, minutes and thirty seconds. Um, and consumes two news stories. Uh, this is also above um, the average of, of the sector. Um, um, let's give me a second, I'm sorry. 
because I have. <laughs> well, Publico is among the top 10 native digital media in Spain, but um, the, the, um, there is a poll, uh, an official poll that uh, is made by uh, a government uh, agency, um, very trustable. And this poll, uh, people say is that um, we are one of the six uh, medias that they consume to read uh, political news. Publico has a social, a uh, very strong social environment, is in the top six of media communities on Facebook and Twitter, and with more engagement according to CrowdTangle data. Uh, it would be in the top nine if we include sports uh, websites there. Um, this is this comes because of this uh, big bet on Facebook that I told you before, okay, um, which made us grow and have a very strong community around there. So um, this is publico, and now <laughs> we can talk about it if you like it. Great, thank you, Virginia. That's really interesting and we covered a lot of ground. So um, I see we have uh, Tomas Garcia Moran here, who I think you might know, right? From La Voz de Galicia. Yeah. Yes. And, and um, yeah, I just want to apologize because a few of the people who have signed up are having trouble getting in. So um, it'll be available online and we'll share the PowerPoint as well. But who who has questions to, to start off, I know I I have a, a few. One one of the things, like you know, I I wonder about. So you you kind of got a launch of Facebook, and this was that was before they changed their algorithm. You know, they did the algorithm tweak to favor family and friends. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And and. So that, and, and I, ha, I know a few media organisations that were really able to, you know, ride that wave and create a big, you know, quite a big um, audience. What does it mean now, though? Like, can you, can you still, like, use Facebook to, like, to launch and grow an audience, do you think? Well, we have a, a, a very uh, sustainable uh, growing in in Facebook. It's not a huge uh, growth, uh, but because this huge growth, we had it in 2014 or 2015 when when the company decided to to bet on on Facebook. Um, so it was not the time of the algorithm as we know it right now. Um, but that allowed us to grow a lot in those days and to maintain a, a very big community around Facebook. And, and actually, I mean, public is on the top five of, of big media communities on social networks, thanks to this, okay? Um, now what we do in Facebook is uh, really measuring what we publish then, <laughs> because I mean mm. we don't want to be kind of like, I mean, eaten by the big <laughs> machine. But well, we share our content there, not everything. Uh, we try to share a lot of native content. Uh, but in order to start this conversation with community, and, and, and to gain subscribers. I mean, our main goal now is to gain subscribers. So everything that we do is focused on that. And, and the Facebook community is very useful for that because it allows us to understand uh, what does people expect from us. Right, okay. And do, do you actually, are you able, like do people subscribe out of Facebook, like from, you know, who, who read your or connect with you on Facebook? Do you find that's a, a, a way to actually build your members to um, reach the new stories? With, I mean, we are investigating or that on that, 
Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, we're finding something that that uh, it has shocked us in some way because we are gaining, for example, in social network, we're gaining more subscribers through YouTube than through Facebook. So we are now, yeah, <laughs> we are now building, really? yeah, in in all these and trying to understand uh, why. You know, but if we're gaining more subscribers on YouTube, uh, I mean, there has to be a way <laughs> that we make subscribers on Facebook. So what we are doing now is studying all the processes and the times when we post and, and how do we post and how do we engage with our community to understand uh, where is this key that we have to find, okay? Right, right. Okay, great. Um, and welcome also, Pooja. I'm glad that you got in. And uh, actually, you missed at the beginning. Uh, Pooja Pandey is from Kabbalaharia, who is an uh, who's a, a local, well, like a hyper local um, website in the uh, news organization in India, and it's it's very much a feminist. Um, feminist media and uh, Pooja you missed actually in the opening that uh, Virginia described Publico also as a feminist media organization which I think is is really interesting so um Emery you Emery you had a question thank you thank you for the presentation it was very useful you said that you had the first events for subscribers in 2019. Uh, what you call events, do you mean event organization? Uh, and do you have any such revenue streams other than uh, reader revenue and advertising revenue? Thank you. Yeah, we launched uh, the subscribers model in 2018. So we started to build around that subscribers model and we started to try things and see how they worked. So um, one of the things we did was that uh, every time we published an, uh, a quarterly magazine, uh, which is only for subscribers, uh, we did this uh, live event uh, on a theater or I don't know, yeah, most of the times on a theater, you know, uh, that only subscribers can attend these this events. Um, but sometimes we allow people uh, to attend that, that they intend to be subscribers, but they just don't, <laughs> don't, don't they are not so sure about it, you know? So, um, I mean, we don't gain anything uh from these events mm, i mean it's like a spending of money for us uh but uh they help to build a very strong community because people just can i mean come and talk to me and and i mean a lot of people and they do actually i mean for me is terrible because I have to spend like four hours every time that we have one of these uh, events, but it's very uh, richful because you can talk to everyone and, and everyone comes and says, well, I don't like this and I would like to understand why you do these things in this way, you know, and, and people really think that and, and feels that they are, um, paid back for their effort, you know, in a time that uh, in, in Spain is not easy. I mean, we have a lot of unemployment, um, uh, uh, very low salaries. And uh, I mean, this is an effort for a lot of people. So we started to, to do these events at that time. Um, now with the pandemic, we have stopped them a little bit. I mean, we do a lot of things online, but it's not the same. I mean, because you don't have the personal touch. Uh, uh, but well, I still think that that they are um, they help us to build that community and to understand what people expect 
uh, from us. I'm not sure if I've answered your whole question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great. Great. Um, Nina, Javier, and then Tendai all have questions. I have se seven questions. Which one should I choose? <laughs> you can maybe choose. I'll just run through them. I don't know what is interesting to the other ones. Um, you touched upon like how the pandemic changed your modus operandi. Uh, I'd be interested, of course, in knowing a bit more either in terms of journalistic content and or community building, distribution, business model in general, maybe if you can elaborate a bit. And then I was a bit interested in who that one competitor is that is more successful than you and why. <laughs> then also I was maybe interested in more like, because you know you talked about the general politics uh, as being the one thing that is most interesting to your viewers and readers, uh, what type of politics maybe if, if apart from feminist in general and critical of the police and authorities. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm interested in the advertisers. Have you ever said no to anyone? Who are they? And um, I'm so old, so I'm always like asking this, like is, is there any space at all in Spain for like something called objective journalism anymore or is it completely outdated in like all echelons? And then of course, like Jackie already talked a bit about Facebook. Um, always intrigued by if you see that there is a danger that you are so dependent on them or now maybe on YouTube. Pick and choose. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, the newspaper that is more successful that, uh, than us in, I mean, there are a lot of, of newspapers that are more successful than Publico in, in the subscription model. But in this, um, let's say, um, progressive um, pack, uh, really we were like four or five. And, and the one that is more successful than us is El Diario.es. Uh, El Diario.es, had uh, when when it was born, I don't remember exactly when it was, but I believe that it could be like in 2010, 2012. I don't recall now the exact date. They started. I mean, it was the first newspaper in Spain that had a subscription model, so they have a very strong community. And obviously, uh, <laughs> it was very tough to to be better than than them uh, because they had an average of um, I don't know six years, eight years over us. So, okay. Um, about let's talk if you want about journalism a little bit. Um, okay, I don't know what is. Um, I'm not so young. I mean, I'm, I'm 48 years old, so <laughs> um, I've been working around for the last 30 years. Um, I'm older. <laughs> you don't look like. <laughs> but, um, well, I, I really don't think that they, they exist, I mean, uh, an objective uh, journalism exists. I don't think that is for real. I mean, I believe in an honest journalism, um, in journalists that m make mistakes and that try to um, um, how do you say that in English? Um, reverse. Yeah, reverse them and 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 admit those mistakes and try not to, to do them again. I believe in newspapers that have the, capi the capacity of doing that. Uh, mm -hmm. And um, Spain is uh, very polarized at this time, so politically polarized. Um, but at the beginning, I was talking about this uh, human rights defense. Uh, for me, that is not uh, from a left uh, hand or a right hand, I mean, is is what 
any newspaper should be doing. Um, but in Spain, <laughs> this is not understood in that way, you know? So if you told me, if you ask me, is Publico an objective uh, newspaper? Uh, really, I cannot answer that, that question, but I can yeah. say that probably we are one of the most honest newspaper, a very critical newspaper. Uh, we analyze every information. We discuss uh, all the time in the newsroom. If we have to go through uh, some issues, if we have to put some things on the title or not, you know, and I mean, it's so tiring. I mean, I, I've mm. never discussed in my whole life as much as I discuss in Publico because everything is through, uh, goes through a very, um, a, 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 an intense process uh, to understand what do we want to tell uh, about reality. I mean, the reality has a lot of angles. We all know that. You can pick one, you can pick another. It depends on when, uh, on your sources. It depends on, on the position of your media. Obviously, I mean, we can, we have, we are not a huge newsroom. We cannot talk about everything that goes on on the world. For example, I'm going to, to just put an example. Um, Colombia, what is going on in, in Colombia? Um, we, we've been covering that. Uh, through agencies because we don't have people in in Colombia, but we've been working for five days, talking to a lot of journalists there, and uh, a lot of people there, and trying to uh, build us a picture, a, a global picture of what is going there, putting that in context with the Colombia history, and today, I mean, five days later, we we have published one story <laughs> from us, you know, I mean, that is signed in Colombia by people in Colombia, but I, I had to know do that. Do you do interviews maybe in your interview section, like in the TV interviews? Yeah, but not only, I mean, I, I before I accepted to publish a story from Colombia, I wanted to know who was the journalist, you know, who had uh, worked, uh, where did she work? Um, in which cities has been uh, covering the story. I talked to her. I mean, it took us five days. I mean, nice. this is not usual. Any other newspaper would have, okay, I have some pictures of that time. Okay, go ahead, you know? And we just go through that very carefully, very carefully, mm. with, but with every story, you know? Um, because, I mean, I don't care if I can not break news about Colombia because I don't think that uh, that is what Publico should do. But Publico has to publish huge analysis about the reality that our readers cannot find in another newspaper. And that's, that's, so, that's so impressive that uh, the transparency circle, like that's like fantastic. That's like really, you know, just one, one quick like thing. I just did like a study on, on harassment of female journalists. And, and I just thought when you're talking about this, that now that are you as the only then female led uh, news outlet in Spain, are you uh, subjected to a lot of harassment, either you or the journalists that work with you? All the time. <laughs> I mean, all the time. Um, uh, we are, I'm the editor-in-chief and I have a, a deputy, a deputy, deputy editor-in-chief, which is also a woman. Um, she has been in Publico for the last uh, three months, so she doesn't know yet <laughs> uh, what is going to, to come. But I mean, uh, there is such harassment that I'm going to tell you one small story. My daughter has lost her keys from my house, okay, last week. And, and I was thinking, oh my God, uh, something is going to come to my house and doing something to me, you know, because this is happening in Spain. I mean, there are some journalists that uh, have found their houses, their doors, broken 
and and they just found uh, their I don't know what como, what's the name for ropa interior Javier ayúdame no sé si está Javier interior what yeah the um the the, the, the under the, underwear 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 <laughs> <laughs> The underwear, and they have found their underwear yeah. just mm -hmm. uh, in. Hey, the again. <laughs> yeah, sorry, the underwear. We, we got it. We got uh, it. Underwear. Well, I spread their underwear on the floor. They didn't miss anything at home, but they found that, and there are four or five cases uh, like this, you know, and this comes from online, and then goes to the street and then goes to your house, you know? So um, I think it's quite significant that when your daughter loses the house keys, the first thing you think is, oh my God, I mean, I'm going to find my underwear uh, on the floor, you know, sometime it's like, wow. But well, here in Spain, there are people, uh, uh, important politician which is the um, the um, major of Barcelona Ada Colau has quit quicker quit Twitter I mean she said she wouldn't be anymore at Twitter uh, there is another journalist uh, female who is called Cristina Fallaras uh, who has suffered a huge uh, harassment that has Twitter has quit on Twitter also um there are some people that well step by step are quitting twitter i don't know if that is the answer mm -hmm. i haven't quit it i think that is uh still useful for some things but the truth is that i barely use it i mean because i mean you don't want to see all that shit and forgive me all the time, you know, like what and, and can have someone actually, else read it. Yeah, thank actually, you. Um, the uh, Javier is working on putting some uh, our resources online. So for the you know online harassment newsroom resources and training. So so that's something to to look out for, and you know take a bit of a look around the IPI website because we've. Been doing a bit of work there and Javier. That's yes, very and, impressive. I used it actually for yeah, the study. Okay, good. That's very good. And and if Thank anyone you. wants to have a conversation with Javier, then of course we can take it out of this meeting. Um and and you know get dig more deeply and maybe maybe we should actually have an online session conversation at a later date. But let's move on. Javier, you were next question, then Tendai, then um Ashante. And welcome, Corinne. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you joined us. Okay, and and Everett so, is Corinne, next. I'm feeling that I've just said something really inappropriate in the chat. I just literally landed very late in this meeting, so I've missed everything that's happened up to this point. I do apologise. No. I dropped a clanger. I was at a client. No, no, meeting, no. Of so course you haven't. No. Thank you. No, no, no. You haven't at all. <laughs> no. Welcome. Okay. So, um, Javier, go. Mm -hmm. uh, well, uh, first of yeah. all. Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, first of all, uh, congratulations for the for the presentation. It was it was very very uh, insightful. Um, also, um, it's quite impressive that uh, Publico has been able to raise uh, such amount of uh, members and subscribers in such a short time, and especially uh, during the economic crisis uh, that. That we are currently, you know, experiencing in Spain, but also the the forthcoming one. So it's still really nice to see that that your you know uh, forecast in terms of amount of subscribers for 2021 is is that high. And in this sense, what I what I was um, what I wanted to ask you, it's um, uh, to tell us uh, what's the role that this investigative unit plays. Into into this uh, into increasing or not the number of subscribers, meaning um, I know the reality and, and, and you know the, the reality of, of current reality of Spain in terms of um, economic resources, etc. Um, so there are not that many newspapers of the size of, of the size of Publico and the scope of Publico. 
that actually dedicates a full team, you know, to only to investigative reporting. So I was wondering um, what's the impact on the um, like more pragmatic impact beyond, you know, what the journalism per se impacted, you know, the current political situation is uh, in, in Spain, as, as you mentioned, your investigations, the investigations of Publico has led to the parliament to uh, develop an uh, investigate, uh, investigative commission to one of the stories uh, mm -hmm. that you that you published. So my question at the end of the day is just basically on that, what's the impact and what's the role of this investigative unit into the overall newspaper uh, well-being in terms of subscribers? Mm -hmm. Well, we haven't uh, we haven't measured. We are working on that this year. Um, which are the areas that bring us more uh, subscribers? But um, as I told you through the presentation, uh, our main channel of of uh, for for uh, bringing subscribers was the mail, and uh, we send like a weekly mail uh, talking about well, news or things that are happening. And the answer when we send a mail about this uh, investigative team and um, these are what we call the sewers of uh, interior of uh, police department um, is huge. I mean, people is so stunned uh, with the uh, reality that nothing matters in Spain. I mean, uh, what, what we revealed with all this investigative uh, journalism is, in my opinion, the worst corruption network uh, from the last 20 years in Spain. And it's affected uh, everything. I mean, political, uh, economic, uh, huge companies uh, that are in in the market exchange, um, every everything. But uh, we are the only newspaper talking about this. So our readers really put that in value, and and they well, I think that that the ones that do that, I mean that put this information on value and, and that gives value to this information. I believe that they are our first subscribers. I mean, that the first year that we launched our subscribers model, they were the ones who <laughs> just came in, you know? Um, but um, it still is an issue that brings us subscribers because people doesn't understand that there are no other media denouncing all these things, you know? Um, so, yes, but I would prefer <laughs> um, that the things work out in another way, I mean, in a more democratic way, and, and we, we wouldn't need to uh, tell our subscribers that we need them to, to keep investigating all these issues. But the reality also <laughs> is that um, since nothing happens, I mean, because we have this, um, um, say, Javier, procedimientos judiciales, proceso judicial. Ay, no te oigo. Judiciary processes. Yes, yeah. yes, legal, yeah, these legal proceedings. Mm -hmm. yeah. Legal proceedings that are, I mean, we have 31 uh, legal procedures opened. Uh, due to the informations published by Publico, 31, okay? But no one of them uh, goes on, you know? So this causes also like a, a very, um, like a depression on the people, you know? And, and, and this, this causes also like the people get tired of, of reading things <laughs> that then uh, don't have a consequence, you know? Um, so I don't know, we, we have these two phases that in one hand, it brings you subscribers and in the other hand, you see that people start to get tired about reading and reading about corruption and nothing happens, you know? So 
Okay, great. So moving along, uh, Tendai. Sorry, am I pronouncing your name right? I hope yes, so. Yes, good. Yeah. Not bad at all. <laughs> okay. I have forgotten to, that, um, please remember to introduce yourselves, people. I'll come back, Nina, you can tell us a bit later who you are for the groups. Um, go ahead, though, Tendai. Okay, no, I'm no. Tendai. I'm the CEO of All Africa Global Media, based in Mauritius. Um, I we, we are just actually uh, starting um, to try to uh, convert. So last last time we were at NZZ and um, in Switzerland, and they they were doing more of a conversion of signed up newsletter, you know, uh, uh, um, subscribers to sub, uh, paid subscription. Um, and I'm wondering, we have about 12,000 uh, signups. And I was wondering whether we bother at all to try to do a conversion type of thing or we just go out. Maybe it, it, whether you think it could be a different person who signs up for free or than a person who pays um, for a subscription. Um, that was the one thing. I was wondering whether you think it's the, the same kind of person. Um, the second thing I'm, I'm, I'm interested in, I'm really, you know, congratulations actually with the amount of, you know, subscribers you've been able to get. May we do the same, <laughs> please. Um, you know, in, 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 in our continent across Africa, you look at it, you know, we're not only looking at the African market, we're looking obviously at all people interested in knowing about Africa, working, you know, with Africa. So it's a global uh, subscription uh, dollar that we're looking for. Um, so I'm also one in, interested in how did you structure the subscription? Are people prepared for something brand new? Yes, you put a magazine in front of them. Okay. What is in that magazine? How do you choose the content for that magazine? Because for example, we have a hundred categories right now of um, newsletters that we send out, which is kind of automated, right? So the magazine that we, we are thinking of putting out with subscription would be something obviously curated, you know, but you know, what do you feel are the main hooks? I know we've just spoken about investigative um, units, but um, okay, I'm asking like three things. Let me just clarify. I'm asking one thing, which is, you know, what do you think um, are the, do you, do you think that it's the same person? Is it worth trying to convert signups into paid or do you just go out there with your mails and just go straight out for, um, you know, new people? And then whoever is a, sub, a sign up goes, number one. Number two, in payments, were people prepared to pay? So we are looking at charging a dollar a week, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and are you, are people prepared to pay a month in advance? Are they prepared to pay a three month or, you know, something like that? I don't know how your payment system worked, what kind of value proposition you put on the table and what was the uptake of that? And the, um, the third uh, question was kind of, what is the hook for that magazine that you put out there? Um, you know, do you have to offer some kind of engagement hook or is it just about really good journalism? Or, you know, are we past the gimmicky engagement hook kind of, you know, what do I get for it? Or is it just about offering really good journalism? So it's those three questions. Okay. First one, um, not all the time, the people who sign a petition is the people who is going to pay. But uh, it depends in the moment, it depends on the issue, it depends on a lot of things. Then with the sign of campaigns, you get a huge database. Uh, it is not the only place where, where we look for subscribers. I mean, we go to them in some points, we go uh, to Facebook, in in other times we go to youtube sometimes it depends or on site i mean it, it depends but um we do sell send uh, mails to this huge database and we always convert some of them you know which uh, really doesn't mean that all of them are willing to pay but 
it means that some of them at least are willing to pay. So, um, I mean, it is just a database, but it is another th another another place where you can go and try to uh, pick up some subscribers. Okay, and for us, it is working because when they sign one of these campaigns, what that means for us is that they are aligned in at least one of the values that we defend. So it is easier to understand that they can be aligned to another values also. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first one. The second one, um, we charge six euros a month. Our, that's the, the price that people pay. Now we are trying to change that, but it's going to take us a, lot, a, a bit of time yet. Um, uh, and we have some problems with the payment model. I mean, but, but with the technology, okay? So uh, we find that uh, there are people that ask us to pay more. There are people who ask us to pay less. They are people to ask us to pay just once a year, you know? So uh, we are trying to build a more flexible model because at this moment, they can only pay once a month. I, oh, mean, I see, I see. Okay, but uh, we are working on that, uh, on flexibilizing the model. Um, so we probably will set a minimum, uh, a minimum pay a month. And then uh, if you want to pay for a year, I mean, there's no problem. If you want to donate, because there, there are people who wants to make a donation or uh, be quantity once a year, Okay, just go on, you know. But we have this problem right now with the flexibility of the technology of payment, okay? And the third question, um, the magazines. I think that is about good journalism and quality journalism. Um, what we try to, to tell in these magazines um, is related to something that is happening, okay, or, or that is going to happen in some moment, uh, but is very related to those editorial flags of Publico. Mm -hmm. um, so what we try to do is telling things that no one has told uh, uh, before. Um, we know, I mean, when, when we make, for example, our magazine about the 15th of May, the Spanish Revolution, we know that a lot of newspapers are going to do the same. So what we <laughs> try to approach is what can we tell that for sure no one else is going to tell? Originality, yeah. Yeah. So in this case, um, I mean, there are a lot of people in the newspaper that lived uh, the 15th of May uh, uh, that have contact with a lot of people that, well, that came from there and with organizations. And when, what we had for clear was that there are still a lot of, um, goals that were settled in in that revolution that they have not been accomplished yeah so what we tried was focusing on that you know uh, not in what was in, in what we did or in how it was this revolution but on in future and and that future thing is something that we try to do all the time uh, try to draw how will be things <laughs> in some time, you know? I mean, it's not, um, uh, it's not fiction because, I mean, there are things that could be real. Mm. Um, but what we do is more ana analyze that mm. information, okay? 
and and we try to count with uh, important uh, writers and um, relevant people and relevant uh, signs that really move people to wanting to read uh, that things. And then we have um, a goal in every publication and in the newspaper also, which is uh, gender equality. I mean, we never have more men signing pieces than women. And uh, this is one thing that, uh, that our readers really value. I mean, this, um, um, I don't know the word. Um, Gender. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. <Come> on. <laughs> Gender. Yeah. Okay. Gender yeah. So um, I don't know, for example, every year since uh, 2018, uh, we made a special on, on the 8th of March and women and so on. This year, we decided not to, not to do in that because, I mean, we did it, but in another way, because I was thinking like, what else can we tell about this? I mean, we have told everything already in our day-by-day -day work, in our magazines. I mean, it makes no sense to make another huge magazine about age of, of uh, eight of March. So we did another thing. I mean, and, and what we did is what I told you in the presentation, this, this magazine called Combatientes, which is like fighters, woman fighters. They are women and they, they fight it during the civil war and no one has recognized her them never. So why not? I mean, why don't doing this on an 8th of March? You know what I mean? Yeah. We, we made it, yeah, I mean, we published it on, on March 8th, but really it was not about March Eight. It was about women, women mm -hmm. that had never been visibilized and that had never been recognized. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I think people loved that one. Yeah. Really loved that. Okay, great. Uh, Thank you. Thank you so much. Ash Thank you. Ashante and Everett is also waiting. So just introduce yourself, Ashante. Hey, so I'm actually um, a journalism student at the Danish School of Media and Journalism. I'm on exchange. So I will be traveling to Spain actually next week for my final project. Mm -hmm. And we're going to investigate um, the freedom of the press. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you, um, how is the freedom of press expression and speech threatened in Spain? And also is there trust in the public from the media, or is there media trust by the public? That's what I meant to say, I think. <laughs> um, media trust uh, from people is very low in Spain. I think that I don't remember now the figures, but Reuters Institute um, has talked about this uh, recently, I, I believe, and what is one of the lowest in Europe, okay? Uh, but I mean, it has always been like that. <laughs> it's not that this is better. I mean, it's awful, but it has always been like that. And and um, besides, uh, when when we didn't have uh, digital newspapers and there were only printed newspapers, Spain has been uh, one of the countries with less. Um, um, I mean, where. It was one of the countries when people uh, read less newspapers. Uh, I don't know if you understand me. I mean, people doesn't read or didn't read. I think that now they read more with digital, okay? But this is a, a reality. Uh, about the freedom of, of speech, uh, we have several um, problems in, in Spain. I chair one of the well the, the platform in in defense of freedom of information and of speech in in Spain. We have several laws 
that were approved in, in 2015 uh, that restrict uh, freedom of expression. We have been uh, fighting for those laws to pass away. Uh, there is a political commitment with that, but they don't really <laughs> end up doing anything. Um, we ha we're having in the last time some problems with journalists trying to cover the arriving of migrants to Canarias. Um, uh, and we still have those problems. Uh, they are not solved yet. Uh, another of the huge problems that we have is the harassment to women journalists. Uh, as as uh, Jackie said before, in the work that IPI has been doing, they have some reports and, and so documentary made by Javier, uh, where the situation in Spain is very well covered and, and related. Um, and well, we have recently uh, an international mission uh, in our country uh, going through a lot of these issues. Um, and we are waiting now for the conclusions of this international mission. Uh, but there are some problems, of course, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you. Emirate. Thank you. Um, first, uh, thanks to IPI for this session and the previous ones, which I think are unique in the world. And I say that because I wouldn't get up at 4 a.m. in New York if they weren't. So it's uh, it's great to be part of this. And to Virginia, thank you for a really thoughtful, uh, insightful presentation. But also, I must say that your presentation of the editorial philosophy and values of your newspaper uh, are the best I've ever heard, and I've heard lots of them. I'm a professor of journalism, and believe me, I've heard many presentations. I give you an A plus, so uh, thank, you. thank you very much. Uh, my you. question is really one of, uh, on the membership uh, and subscription model, uh, whether people, how the, your, your members uh, see themselves. There are very few organizations I know that have a, a true membership model, and they usually associate themselves with a member of an organization. For example, the National Geographic, uh, if, if you join that, you're technically a member of the National Geographic Society. Or if you join uh, uh, the Consumer Reports, you are a member of the Consumer Union. So how do your um, readers see themselves uh, as, as members or does that differ from being a subscriber to anything else? Yes, it is. Um, okay, we as a newspaper, we have defendant, uh, we have defended since 2017 the right of voting in Spain uh, and electing the type of state we want as the third. I mean, between monarchy and republic, okay? And, and we believe as newspaper that we have the right to choose, okay? Um, this was before our king flew away to Emirates and so on, you know? <laughs> so our claim for our subscribers is that uh, when you become subscriber publico, you become a member of the unique republic that you can belong to in Spain, okay? So you are a member of Publicos Republic. It's the Republic of Publico. You know, it's a place where you can be free, when you can speak about anything, when, can, when you can uh, defend uh, democratic values and fight for implementing them. And, and that is our space of belonging for our subscribers in the Republic of Publico. That is the one. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. That's like getting up to, um, well, 7.30 p.m. here in Sydney, I think 11.30 in Spain. So yeah. we're, we're kind of out of time. And thank you so much, Virginia, for spending these 90 minutes thank taking you. us through uh, Publico. And, you know, it's, it's a fascinating model.
and all power to you as um as Pooja said at some point in the in the notes so uh yeah that's that's really it thank you everybody for coming I just want to sort of throw it open I guess and ask if there's any final thoughts or reflections from you Virginia or from any anyone any of you well I, I would like to thank you to, to apologize for my terrible English I hope that you understood me <laughs> in some way and I really thank you for your questions and and for your time and for IPI for organizing all these that is I think is very useful for everyone so thank you yeah now your English is absolutely fine it's perfect I don't I think we all we all you know yeah totally followed along Tendai um I just wanted to thank um Virginia um and Publico for for you know for putting your heart into Publico and for what you do and for having the guts to do what you do because many of us uh, dream of doing this and believe we should be, but we're actually not, and you actually are. So, you know, just thank you from all women. And, you know, thank you, IPI, for, for this opportunity. Thank you.